Now let's make a brief introduction of the program. Revit is a building information modeling software for project documentation. It's different from AutoCAD, which is a pure general CAD computer and design. Revit provides us the possibility of making complete projects in architecture and engineering subjects. One of its main characteristics is, when modeling a building, the program automatically generates different views. Look at this example. In this file, you have floor plans, elevations, or sections. Suppose I'm working in, on this floor plan and I add a new door. The view East Elevation, which is the view from this side, automatically updates with the new door there. Unlike AutoCAD, in Revit we don't draw lines, curves or other simple objects. The elements we insert in our drawings are more complex. Most of them are real parts of a building. Along there are some 2D elements like text, dimension lines, or scheduled tables, models and families. Every time I start Revit, this layout appears where I can choose between two types of files to work with. Basically, if I want to make a project on Revit, I need to create a new model. On the other hand, families are the elements used on projects. Let's look at this in detail. I'm going to open the example of the model that I showed to you previously. This one. This is the main display of Revit. The main window is the working area where we draw our projects. On the top is located the ribbon. There you can find all the tools which will help you to complete your drawings. It's divided in different categories, organized by tabs. Architectural, Structures, Steel, and so on. At the left side, there are located these two windows by default, but they are possible to display differently or to resize if you want. The one below is the project browser. It's where I choose what to see on the main window. It's organized by categories and I can minimize or maximize them clicking here. In views, I can switch to the different views of the project, floor plans, 3D views, elevations or sections. To open a view, I double click on the one I want and a new tab appears on the project. In this case, the floor plan level one. Now let's look to a 3D view. An elevation view would be like this and the section. Aside from views, there are also scheduled tables, sheets for printing purposes, among other features. Basically, you can make a full project just in one file. Now I am going to open a sample family template. Let's choose this one, architectural. As you see, what I have here is a furniture element to use in an architectural project. The display in a family file is pretty the same as in a model file. On the project browser, you can still switch from different views. Now let's look at the properties window, back in our sample project. Basically, it shows the properties of the current element active. If I click on this furniture, you can see the information of that element. Here you can find geometrical details, as well as information about its location on the project. As every element here, it was created as a family. Also, the prompts that appear on the properties change depending on the kind of element active.
By the way, if I don't have any element selected, the property shows the information of the current tab. How to use the mouse in the workspace? First of all, it's important to have in mind that you should use the mouse with a scroll wheel. It's going to be very hard to work in Revit with the touchpad, as we need to zoom all the time, select objects or move the workspace. If you know AutoCAD, the way to use the mouse is very similar here. But there are some slight differences. Mouse wheel. With the mouse wheel, I can zoom in or zoom out the workspace. To move the workspace area, press and hold the wheel and now you can move around. Left button. Select elements and selection area. Clicking with the left button, I can select an element, which is the same as the family. To select more than one element, I can click first in one, then have to hold CTRL to click on the second. Another option to select objects is using selection areas. And like AutoCAD, there are two kinds. If I start from the right to the left, ah, and I need to click and hold the left button, I can select any element that I touch with the pointer. However, if I make the selection from the left to the right, I need to completely cover the elements to select them. Right button. If I click with the right button in the project window, this panel opens with several options. For example, it's possible to switch on or off the properties panel and the browsers. As you see, the project browser is active, but there are others that I can add. In the next chapter, I will show you how to start a new project in Revit. You will learn to start drawing a floor plan and how we can manage with the different views. As soon as we click to open a new project, this window shows up on the screen. There are four default templates that come with the software. The difference between them is the organization of the project browser. For example, in a structural template, the tabs are specific in order to make a structural project. Of course, it's also possible to create your own templates, but that's something to learn later. In this video, I'm going to create an architectural project. Click on File. Then go to New, Project, and in this tab I select Architectural Template. So we have now opened a new file as an architectural template. Now, to encourage you to start evolving in the program, in the next few minutes you will learn how to create walls properly. I'm going to draw it in a floor plan and then I switch to an elevation view to check out if it has the correct height and at what level it's placed. Let's open the view Floor Plan Level 1. This tab indicates which entry from the project browser is currently active. If you are not on Level 1, double click on it there. Now I am going to create a wall. It's very simple. Click on the icon located in the Architecture tab at the ribbon. Alternatively, I can type the shortcut WA. Then click for example here to place the start point. And let's suppose I want to draw a horizontal line. When you try to draw it, and if you have the default Revit settings, the wall snaps automatically when I'm close to the horizontal direction. And the same applies when I want to make it vertical. To set up a specific length, just type the value that I want and press enter. It's the same as in AutoCAD. Then the system prompts me to insert another wall connected to the first one. This time I want it vertical. And once it's done, they automatically connect to each other. 
press escape to exit the wall placing function. Ah, and look, a good thing that happens in Revit. If you don't save the project for some time, this window appears to recommend you to do it. Now let's see an effective way to draw on your orthogonal walls. It's very simple. Hold the button Shift while drawing and you can see it's much faster. Ok, let's continue. I'm going to activate again the action for placing a wall and this time I type its shortcut which is WA. And this is important. Anytime I add a new element to the project, the ribbon switches to the Modify tab. There, the display of icons and panels is adapted for the current element. In this case, it's specified for placing walls. Now, let's look what I can do here. Draw Panel Tools. The default shape to insert a wall is a line, but you can find several there, depending on each situation. If you know how to use AutoCAD, these tools and the way they work are a bit similar to the drawing commands back there. The default option here is to draw in a line shape, and it's also the most common one. If I want a rectangular shape, I click on the icon, and the result is like that. Here, if I want to type a specific length values, I need to do it after placing the walls. Also, notice that each wall is still independent. Here, I click in this length to change it. Then, there are also polygons, circles, arcs, or ellipses. Units. The default length units in Revit are millimeters, but it's possible to change them in project units. Go to the Manage tab. In the Settings panel, click on this icon Project Unit. The shortcut is UN. In this window, we can edit all the units that we can use on Revit. The units are grouped by disciplines, as you can see in this tab. The common units are probably the most used ones. There, you can find the length units, area, volume, and more. For example, if I switch to structural, the units are related to this discipline. Mass, force, moment, there is a big list here. Back to common, to edit length units, I click on this button and the format window appears. Now, in the first tab, I can choose from one of these types. In this project, I want to specify the units as meters. In rounding, I set the number of decimal places. I choose two decimals to have a precision up to the centimeters. And this is important, it applies only for dimension lines. Because when I'm sketching, the four decimals still appear here. In Unit Symbol, I decide if I want a symbol, in this case M, to appear or not. Suppress so trailing zero. If I tick this option, this hides the zeros that appear at the right. Can you see? They are no longer there. Ok, let's talk again about walls. Anytime we insert a wall in the project, we draw it based it on its line, which is this blue dashed line. The one set by default is the wall's center line, and it's located in the center of the wall independently on the wall type and materials used. And on the properties window I can check out where the location line is. If we draw this example using the wall center line, the values there are the dimensions of the axis located on the center of the wall, and sometimes it's better to have the line in a different position. 
Now, let's look to the next example. Here, I have these walls with external dimensions. If I click on the Location Line tab, I can see these different options. I will explain to you after, but for now, I switch to Core Face Exterior. Basically, the location line is located on the external side when I draw clockwise. If I select Core Face Interior, the location line appears on the internal side when drawing the same direction. By the way, if you find this confusing, it's not a problem, because you can always press the space bar to switch the position of the line. Looking again at the Location Line tab, you can see these options like Core and Finish Face. What exactly is that? For Revit terminology, in a simple wall, like the ones we were drawing, the core corresponds to the full width of the wall. However, in a compound wall, in Revit it's considered that it has a core and a finished face. I'm going to show to you. Let's type WA to start drawing a wall. Then, on Properties, I click on this button to switch to a different wall type. As you can see, there are several of them here, with different widths and materials. Also, if you don't find it in this list, the type that you want, you can create it easily. I choose Render on Brick on Block. As you can see, the location line, which is Core Exterior, is at the bottom part of the core here. Ok. We have almost reached the end of the first part of this tutorial. But before leaving, I want to introduce Visual Styles and Detail Level. To change the Visual Style, I click here. The current one is Wireframe, which is the simplest and the one that consumes less RAM memory. I'm going to switch to Consistent Colors to check how it looks like. Now. The icon on the left sets the detail level. At the moment, I'm using Coarse, which is the most simple. If I click on Medium, I can see that the wall has a bit more detail. For example, now I can understand the location of the brick layer. Now, yes, it's everything in this video. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to, to get easy access to the full list of tutorials. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget to watch the second part. Thank you and hope to see you next time.